Hello folks, I'm here to give a, another little demo of one of the new, or some of the new uh, possibilities uh, that are enabled by the uh, Depthcraft refactor in Blender. Um, so just a quick little bit of mini background. Um, the Depthcraft is, is the uh, sort of like structure in the behind the scenes in Blender that runs that basically figures out what parts of your scene are depending on other parts of the scene due to parenting, drivers, um, constraints, modifiers, a uh, bunch of other stuff too. And um, basically um, it constructs a little graph of these dependencies. And then when you execute an animation frame by frame, it can um, sort of uh, evaluate the things that are higher up in the graph before the things that depend on those things. So you get consistent smooth updates of your scene. And um, this um, system is actually um, in the current master branch of Blender, really, really ancient. It was actually written during Elephant's Dream um, and it supports the old animation system in Blender. And one of the side effects of this is that um, it really only officially supports um, object data blocks. So if you go into the drivers section and let's go to like a single property driver here, you'll notice you here you have a little pop-up that lets you pick from any kind of data block that Blender has um, as a source for your driver. So for instance, it lets you say, um, uh, say that you want to drive an object or a keyframe or a shape key uh, based on uh, the energy of a lamp. Well, you theoretically could do that. Um, here's the lamp data block. You would pick it, grab its energy, and go to town. Um, however, in practice, that doesn't really work um, because Blender kind of doesn't really have the infrastructure behind the scene to create the graph of those dependencies. So even though you can build the driver, there's no guarantee that the lamp energy will get updated in time for it to affect um, the thing that you're trying to drive. And so you get weird inconsistencies and lag and um, bad renders. So the dependency graph refactor is kind of like uh, making all of those data blocks work. And um, so uh, for this particular experiment, I'm going to see what that does to the workflow of creating corrective shape keys for a mesh. And we can dem demonstrate this on good old Prug. So here's Prug. And um, what I've done is I've made two uh, shape keys uh, for his mouth. So here's the full open shape key right here. And that's just opening his jaw. And here is the smile shape key. And I've actually uh, made this more exaggerated uh, than the one in the one in the movie. So he actually smiles uh, a lot harder here than he ever does in elephant stream um, and the full open is based on baking out the armature uh, open into a shape key and then tweaking a bit so everything looks good um, you know uh, it actually works surprisingly well uh, but if we take these and put them both together we get some kind of weird um, we get some kind of weird artifacts here like the it doesn't really look like a proper open mouth laugh slash smile there's you know a bit of ugliness here that would be nice to correct um, so there's one workflow for that and that is to create uh, corrective shape keys uh, so basically what you would do is you would add a new shape key and with those both on at 100 let's turn it on and you got to make sure that this little uh, cube with the vertices button is checked and that is um, basically making the shape keys all active in edit mode. So if I tab in, it doesn't change the mesh. And now I can edit the shape key, and that's going to apply a correction on top of the um, original smile. And really helps to have a proportional edit mode, as you can see on. So if you look in options, you have the X mirror, and you have the proportional edit mode. Those are super helpful when you're making your corrective shape keys, because you don't have to do quite as much work pushing verts around. And we're going to just basically pull stuff in so it's a bit more natural here. We can also take these loops 
and sort of get them a little bit more tightly together. Um, and we have, yeah, we can change the, I like to use the proportional edit mode on uh, connected vertices so that I don't affect the teeth by accident while I'm moving the lips. And you can always uh, use the Alt-O hotkey to turn it off if you want to do like a little vert by vert tweaking. And uh, all my changes are being applied to the other side. So you can see I'm getting the corners a little bit more defined. And if you take this fold of skin and rather than pushing it back like this, I can make it like a sort of stretch out and kind of do a little dimple on the sides of his mouth and so forth. I'm really liking to work in um, textured mode here because it lets us kind of see how the rest of the skin is deforming. So rather than going through the tedious process of showing you like the point by point um, changes, I've actually gone ahead and cheated and behind the scenes created this uh, fix. So you can see here we have the smile and the open combining in a slightly more uh, elegant way. And if I had spent more time on it, it could even be better. So it kind of looks more like his mouth is laughing than being in some kind of weird rictus pose. And so that's all possible in um, Master. And here we come to the really cool part um, of the dependency graph refactor. So um, obviously you can manually slide that on and off. So you can like say, oh, if I have this smile up, just like kind of turn this on until it looks more natural. But that's kind of annoying and nobody wants to do that. Who's going to remember that anyway? So what we can do is we can add a driver to the smile open shape. So you just hover your mouse over the little number and you hit D. And you get the pink um, or purple highlight here. And we have our driver over here. Um, we're going to drive from um, single property here. And here's the new magic. I'm actually able to go here and select key block as the driver source source. And then I'm going to pick Prug's shapes as the shape key block that's right here, driving the actual shape key itself. Now this is pretty much magic as far as the original DeckRath is concerned. The cool thing is that I don't have to uh, go anywhere and select anything else. I can just hover over the or right click. I can go to the smile and I can right click over the number and I can do copy data path and then hit control V here and you see we get the smile. So we'll call this variable smile. And so that's basically how much smiling is on. You can see the debug value here is showing you the same number here. So that's a smile variable. And let's take our full open variable. So copy paste, uh, add new variable, sorry, single property. And once again, I'm going to select that same key block. And I'm going to go to the full open and copy data path and paste it in here and get the open and call the variable open for ease of use. And now here comes a little bit of um, really simple math. Um, so I want this smile to be happening more when both the open, uh, sorry, the smile open, the correction shape key, to happen more when both the open and the smile are both active at the same time. So I'm just going to add them. Uh, so if you have full open plus uh, smile, um, so it's going to go from 0 to 2 now. Um, so I'm going to divide that by 2. Um, and then I ju just want less of it if either of these is lower down. So I'm just going to multiply by them since they go by both by 0 to 1. So I'm going to do time smile. So if smile is at 50%, then this is going to drop to 50%, and also times full open. And so that's our expression. Um, I have an invalid Python expression here because what did I do wrong? Let's just see. Oh, no, it's fine, actually. Maybe it was invalid while I was typing it at one point. So we update dependencies. And so now if I, uh, so I drag this down. We got the smile open. Oh, it's actually invalid. So let me. Oh, yeah, it's not full open. It's actually just open. We have to use the uh, name of the variable that I picked, not the name of the actual shape key. So, yeah. See, I should have just called the shape key open. And now it's happy. 
Um, so I'm going to have a little, little error there. Um, so now, you know, everything still works. I can open the mouth. I can smile the mouth. But when I smile and open at the same time, you notice this little guy is going up on its own. And so we get a really neat um, uh, driven shape key thing. And I really like this workflow a lot because you notice I never had to select anything other than Proog's face to make it work. And also I've embedded some smarts into the mesh key block itself. And so no matter how we drive those shape keys in the future, if we decide to set up a rig to drive them, or if we just decide to use them by hand, uh, the same intelligence is going to work for us. And so that's like kind of a really cool uh, little feature. Uh, so it's just a very convenient workflow to set up and also um, kind of keeps all our intelligence about the shape key blending encapsulated on the mesh level itself. This beautiful laughing Prug. I mean, just look at how happy he looks now. He's never looked that happy before. And um, yeah, if you turn this off here, you can see how ugly it gets once you uh, turn off that little smarts in the mesh. So you can actually build up uh, a pretty nice behaving mesh using its own shape keys alone and not having to drive anything externally. Um, and that's uh, only possible due to the depth graph uh, refactor that um, is currently a, a work in progress, but I hope we'll see in a future blender, let's say 2.75, I hope, I hope. Okay, that's it for this one. Thank you very much and see you soon.